So, I mean, it's it's really interesting to even when they say kind of like ridiculous things and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, well, they didn't go to college, so they weren't exposed to that. Well, no. Do you they find didn't. yourself either just biting your tongue or engaging with them and then later regretting it or something I, else? I don't necessarily regret it because me and... Uh, me and my father, it's not like a volatile relationship, but it's very, mm. it's very intense. We're really bold personalities, so we're not afraid to kind of like punch it out. But um, we've definitely gone through most of my life as like, no, side A is correct, no, side huh. B. Like, and at the end of the day, it gets exhausting. So most of the time now, I'm just like, I'm not gonna engage with that. Let's mm. talk about something else. Mm. Are you open to learning a potential method for improving those conversations with your parents? Absolutely, because, okay. uh, you know, sometimes it's exhausting when something comes up and I'm like, oh, we're not going to talk about this. And then we talk about something else and it's, oh, that's another topic. We're not going to talk about this. Mm. So, we're so you're avoiding all these landmines, I guess, Ex right? Like, exactly, exactly. Because huh. I don't want to uh, devalue what I've learned in my education, mm -hmm. but I don't want to do the same to my father or my mother or my grandmother, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's good to find middle ground in areas that aren't too contentious. I totally get you. And you're verbalizing almost exactly what motivates me to have these conversations because I recognize that divide. I recognize the, the difficulties that people are having in their families and friends and even the society as a whole when it comes to contentious topics yeah. and debating and what is actually true and all that stuff. And I'm, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if you are content with your parents and I'm, I don't want to be like picking on your parents. I'm not doing no, that. No, no, but, my parents are great. We have a healthy yeah. relationship, so I'm okay with critique. Here, here's my thing. If they are indeed thinking that something is true, when mm -hmm. in reality it isn't, yeah. wouldn't you want to help them figure that out? Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely do, but uh, I guess when I was younger, my first thought was to be more like an attack dog, like, what are you talking about? This, mm -hmm. this, and this, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's also how my dad acts, and so that's kind of how he thinks you get due to people, so I was, uh. let's just slam into them. Now, I'm kind of like, let's introduce little bits of information here or there, or we'll talk about a topic, and I'll yeah. um, I'll tell them about one little aspect of it. Well, but did you actually know that that's not the case? Mm. That is not what um, you know scientists are conveying. That's how the media is saying we're saying it. Mm -hmm. But this is actually what's trying to be come across. And, and often they're just like, oh, I mean, well, that's not so bad. Or, oh, like I completely misconstrued that. Or that's oh, really? not how it's, it's construed to the media. Yeah. There have been times where you've shown them uh, the, the truth of the matter and yeah. they've accepted it. It didn't yeah. turn into a debate. So, so the, the example that I used before when I, we were talking about people as, as monkeys or as apes, mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, did you know that anthropologists aren't actually saying that. That is just kind of a, a twisted, morphed version that I guess somebody ran with. How do they respond um, to it? They're like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, what is actually happening? And I'm like, well, this is the, actually what the message of anthropology is trying to convey. It's completely different. It's kind of like that issue with telephone where you say one thing mm -hmm. and then it gets down mm -hmm. the line. It's completely well, How do they wrong. respond to that? Oh, they're, they're, they're like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Huh. And they're just, they're just completely amazed. Did they... Did they fully understand what it was that you were conveying to them, and did they change their view on it? Well, I definitely think so, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they engage with other people. Right. Or often they talk. They might about, go out like, with their evolution. friends and start talking about monkeys, exactly. and uh, humans can't come from monkeys or something. I mean, that was for some reason the first time I had that conversation with them a couple months ago, and yeah. so it just blew my mind because I'm like, hold on, I came from you. Isn't it exciting though when you when you get those opportunities to have those discussions? Yeah, and as you get older, you realize you your parents actually have different ideologies mm -hmm. that you don't get to until you really understand how to talk about them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of heartbreaking but at the same time exciting to, to humanize your parents, mm -hmm. your family, mm -hmm. your, your friends. I think that's a good way of putting it. It could be heartbreaking when, uh, when I see my family members thinking that something is true uh -huh. when the evidence clearly seems uh -huh. to indicate that that's not real. And I made the mistake uh, many, many years ago before I learned street epistemology, mm -hmm. where I would I would uh, pull up articles, links, um, give them the facts, maybe even tease them for thinking that they yeah. because they thought that. But you can't just throw a bunch of paperwork. And no, it's well not they, work. they they didn't even listen to it. Yeah, well they don't it's, also know how to interpret it, you know, mm -hmm. especially reading if you're giving them like dense articles. Part of me is tempted to like want to see if you want to role play where you pretend to be your dad or your mom mm -hmm. making a claim and then I then I, I, I basically interview you as a proxy for them or maybe just end it so we you know we can we can do a second conversation or something or maybe open it up where you can ask me questions about what I'm doing 
We can definitely do that. I can I can role play my father. <laughs> but you if you're do that? yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay. Um, I don't. I hope it doesn't portray my father in a negative light. No, I, I think we'll be um, we'll be as charitable as possible. Yeah. I mean, recognize that that you are not your dad, and yeah. you might be saying things that he would never say, and yeah. possibly even be upset that you've said it, representing him as such. But yeah. um, hopefully, with that charity in mind, um, yeah. Do you want to like pretend that you're him? Sure. Okay. Um, can I be the person coming home from school and like, sure. Dad, Dad, I just came home from school. I'm just about to get my doctorate in anthropo anthropology, and I discovered these wonderful facts about humans. And we didn't come from monkeys, but we're related to them in, in a way. We have a we have a shared ancestor with them. Isn't that isn't that fascinating? Oh Lord, what? Who is teaching that? Who are you talking to over there? Oh well, I'm going to UTSA and I'm getting my doctorate and learning it. Oh Lord, you're in San Antonio. That's a bunch of liberals, aren't they? You, you, don't, you don't talk to anybody else on the other spectrum. All you're talking about is to these far-out anthropologists. Do you think that the, the political leanings of a particular instructor influences the fact of the matter? Uh, I think anthropology in general is just kind of like a hippie way of, of thinking about the world. It might not be real. What do you exactly mean by hippie way? Um, if you envision... In this scenario, are you still me? I'm, st or are you I'm still actually asking. I'm still me? you. You're still your dad. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, anthropologists, I kind of as envision as these these kind of flighty, oddly dressed, tattooed, mm. uh, pierced people. Okay. Um, that just kind of travel around the world and explore. It's like Indiana Jones. You're basically Indiana Jones. Okay. I think what I hear you saying is that. When you look at people who are gravitating towards anthropology, they tend to look a little unusual. They might wear some funky clothes, maybe dye their hair purple or something like that, um, like I've done, and um, maybe be all tattooed up. And they're maybe they're they're different. They they they're a little bit different than the type of people that I normally associate with, with like a respectable area of science or something. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I just I don't I just don't understand. Mm. how they think or why mm. they do what they do it's just so different sure sure so. do you think you would be open to meeting a few people and and sure they might look a little unusual maybe they have some tattoos and maybe talk a little funny but do you think that you would be open to talking to them like if if you spent a week with seven hippy dippy anthropologists would you be more open to hearing their views yeah, absolutely, but I'm still gonna. I'm, I still may make a couple jabs or jokes at them. Okay, it sounds like a deal. End scene. End scene. That was very good. So, what did you notice about what I was doing when you said something? What did you notice about me doing there? Well, you definitely. You see, I don't want to say you you seemed passive, but it was mm. just it was a lot more laid back well, version yeah. of how me and my father engage. Okay. Um, but it was definitely not confrontational. It's kind mm -hmm. of like whatever jab or mm. anything gets thrown, you kind of use it to your advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you, as your father, think that I was listening to you? Well, yeah, because you were using my, my same terminology and you mm -hmm. were directly addressing my statements okay. in return. Did you, as your father, think that I was misrepresenting what you were saying? No, not necessarily, no. Okay. Good. That's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I'm trying to go for when I do these interviews. I know we were doing a role play there, but that's that's exactly what I try to do when I'm doing street epistemology, mm -hmm. where I want you as your father or whatever to hear what you're saying and the reasons why. So I I, I didn't dismiss your reason. The reason is they look strange. They're hippy dippy, and you can't trust anything those weirdos say. So rather than just gloss it off and say, well, they're really nice people, like. You know, I wanted to acknowledge that that's your reason, yet I want to see if you're willing to budge on it, or even if that is a factor. Because I ask you some question like, you know, if you spent a week with them, would you change your view? Would you be more open to what they say? And if you said, no, I would be just as resolute in my dismissing anthropology as being true, even if I think they became my best friends mm -hmm. and they wanted me to be in their wedding or whatever, like it had, it had no bearing on it. Then there's something else propping up his willingness to dismiss anthropology. Yeah. So with SE, street epistemology, we're driving to the real reason. What's the real reason? So we might keep talking and he said, you know what? 
Yeah, even if they were the nicest people on earth, I'd still dismiss anthropology. Well, can we tell a little bit more about why that's the case? You know, when I was in fifth grade, I had to do this science experiment, mm -hmm. and I spent all weekend long on it. And I turned it in, and the teacher didn't even look at it. And I got a, I got a, I got an A. And it, so it doesn't even matter. Like, it, mm -hmm. she didn't even like pay attention to it, and I still got rewarded for it. And now we're digging deeper as far as what might be motivating this. It may not have anything to do with the fact of the matter about anthropology. But it's or, his life experience. Is that Possib possibly. That's just an example. There may be something underlying propping up his his reasons for yeah. not accepting what you're telling him as fact. Yeah.